In this video, we will discuss a method for solving quadratic equations called the square root property. So we're going to utilize the square root property. So the square root property tells us that if x squared equals a, then x equals the square root of a or the negative square root of a for all non-negative real numbers a. If we're going to use the square root property to solve a quadratic equation, first thing we need to do is write our equation in the proper form. So an expression squared equal to a number. Then we'll apply the square root property and then solve the resulting equations, making sure to simplify any radicals as necessary. So let's take a look at this equation. So we have x squared minus 50 equals 0. So first thing we would need to do is get this in proper format to apply the square root property. So we got to get the expression that's squared by itself. So I'm going to add 50 to both sides. So x squared minus 50. I'm going to add 50 on this side. Equals... 0, and then I'm going to add 50 on this side. So on the left, the minus 50 and plus 50 cancels, so we're left with x squared equals 0 plus 50, which is 50. And now we can apply the square root property. If x squared equals 50, then x equals negative square root of 50, or x equals positive square root of 50. Now, the third step told us to solve the resulting equations, making sure to simplify any radicals. X is by itself, so technically there's no solving there to do, but we do need to check to see if those radicals, if that radical will simplify. So we've got the square root of 50. So let's make a factor tree there. So 50, we could break that up into 5 times 10. And then 5 is already prime, so it won't break down. So I'm going to bring it down, but 10 will break down into 2 times 5. So we can rewrite the square root of 50 as the square root of 2 times 5 times 5. And then we have a perfect square in there because a group of two of the same factors represents a perfect square. So the 5 times 5, that's our perfect square. So 5 times 5 is 25. So we got the square root of 25 is our perfect square times the square root of 2 is our leftover. And finally, square root of 25 is 5. So we've got 5 times the square root of 2. So now we've simplified that radical, square root of 50, so let's replace it back over here. So x equals negative 5 square root of 2, or x equals positive 5 square root of 2. And we could write our answer in set notation, usually with the set brackets there, and we put both answers inside. So negative 5 square root of 2, comma, 5 square root of 2. Close your brackets. And that would be your final answer for this problem. But let's take a look at another example. So in this case, we have 2x minus 3 quantity squared equals 12. So we have an expression squared by itself equal to a number, so we can apply the square root property here. If 2x minus 3 squared equals 12, then 2x minus 3 equals negative square root of 12, or 2x minus 3 equals positive square root of 12. All right, so I've got to solve this equation, but I'm going to start that process with simplifying the radical. So let's see if the square root of 12 will simplify. So we can break 12 up into 2 times 6, 
2 is already primed, so it'll come down. And then 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. So we can rewrite the square root of 12 as the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. And we do have a perfect square in there, a group of two of the same. So 2 times 2 makes up a perfect square of 4. So we got the square root of 4 times our leftover square root of 3. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So we've got 2 times the square root of 3. So now let's replace that over here in the other two equations. So we've got 2x minus 3 equals negative 2 square root of 3 or 2x minus 3 equals positive 2 square root of 3. Since these two equations are going to be very, very similar to one another in the solving there, getting x by itself, we could actually combine that into one equation to solve using what we call the plus or minus symbol there. So we could write that as 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2 square root of 3. And that makes our equation a little bit easier to solve there. Uh, we won't have to work out two equations since they'll be very similar to one another. We can just do it one time. So I'm going to start this by adding 3 to both sides. So 2x minus 3. Add 3 on that side. And then plus or minus 2 square root of 3. I'm going to add 3 on that side. So on the left, the minus 3 and the plus 3 will cancel. So we have 2x equals. And generally, the part, the term that doesn't have the radical in it, we put it in front. So it's not wrong to leave it in the order it's in. It's just um, looks like nicer notation. We don't get confused about what's inside the radical and what's not if we put the, the term that doesn't have the radical first. So I'm going to put 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Now you could have left it in the order you had and it would not be wrong. And then lastly to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So multiplication and division of 2 will cancel. And we've got x equals 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 all over 2. And then that makes up two answers, so don't forget. So your solution set would be the set that includes 3 plus 2 square roots of 3 all over 2 and 3 minus 2 square root of 3 all over 2. All right, so now that we've gone through a couple of examples, and worked out the answers there. You may want to try this next example on your own. All right, I'm going to assume you paused the video and did that if you wanted to, so let's go ahead and go through this. So we have x plus 8, all of that squared equals negative 25. So the expression that's squared is by itself on the left. So we can, and it's equal to a number, so we can apply the square root property. So if x plus 8 squared equals negative 25, then x plus 8 equals negative square root of negative 25, or x plus 8 equals positive square root of negative 25. All right, so let's start this process by simplifying the square root of negative 25. So we've got a negative beneath the radical there. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite that as the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of 25, 25 is a perfect square. Square root of 25 is just 5. And then the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary unit. So 5i. 
So let's go over here and replace the square to negative 25 with 5i. So we have x plus 8 equals negative 5i or x plus 8 equals positive 5i. So again, we have two equations that are very similar to one another. So let's combine that together into one equation so we don't have to do double the work. So x plus 8 equals plus or minus 5i. So we've solved that equation by subtracting 8 from both sides. So on the left-hand side, we've got x plus 8. We're going to subtract 8 on that side. And we've got plus or minus 5i on the right-hand side. We'll also subtract 8 on that side. So the plus 8 and the minus 8 cancel on the left. So we've got x equals plus or minus 5i minus 8. Generally, we put, when we have a complex number part of our answer, we put the part that doesn't have a complex answer first there. So the negative 8 first and then the plus or minus 5i. But that's just preferred notation. It doesn't mean that it's wrong if you leave it in the order plus or minus 5i minus 8. So we just tend to reorder and put the complex number portion term uh, second there. So again, remember that is two separate solutions. So negative 8 plus 5i is one solution and negative 8 minus 5i is the second solution. So those are the two solutions to this equation there. All right, so let's look at one more example before we go on. So we have three times x minus seven quantity squared equals 75. So right now, the thing that's squared is x minus seven, and it is not by itself. So I have to start this problem by getting the expression that's squared by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. So the multiplication and division of three would cancel on the left, and we would have x minus seven squared equals 75 divided by 3, which is 25. So now we have an expression squared, x minus 7 squared, equal to a number so we can apply the square root property. So if x minus 7 squared equals 25, then x minus 7 equals negative square root of 25, or x minus 7 equals positive square root of 25. And hopefully we realize the square root of 25, that's a perfect square. So we can just make that x minus 7 equals negative 5 or x minus 7 equals positive 5. And again, we've got two very similar equations. So to save myself time solving, I'm going to make that x minus 7 equals plus or minus 5. And then we can solve this equation by adding 7 to both sides. So on the left, x minus 7, we'll add 7 on that side. And on the right, we have plus or minus 5. And we will also add 7 on that side. So it looks like on the left, the minus 7 and plus 7 will cancel. So x equals plus or minus 5 plus 7. Now, you may be tempted here to say the answer is plus or minus 12, but you've got to be very careful about your arithmetic. So let's think about what that would be when we split that up. That would be positive 5 plus 7 or negative 5 plus 7. And while positive 5 plus 7 is 12, negative 5 plus 7 is 2. 
So be very, very careful. And remember that this sign right here, the plus or minus, means you've got a positive 5 and a negative 5. So you can't just do 5 plus 7 and then tack on a plus or minus. You have to do positive 5 plus 7, which is where the 12 came from. And you have to work out negative 5 plus 7, which is where the 2 comes from. So just be really careful about that. So our two solutions are 12 and 2 there. Now one thing I want you to notice here, I'm going to scroll back through here and look at the second and third examples. So in the second example, our final answers, they still involved radicals, so they still involve square roots there, and they were identical to one another except for these middle signs. So this one has a plus in the middle and this one has a minus. If we look at this third example, we involve the imaginary unit, and if you remember, the imaginary unit is just the square root of negative 1, so technically this answer still involves radicals, and notice that the two answers are exactly the same except for, again, the middle signs. This one has a plus in the middle, that one has a minus. When you have two things that are identical to one another except for their middle signs, they're called conjugates of one another. Anytime you solve a quadratic equation and your answer still involves radicals or involves the imaginary unit, you will have two answers and they will be conjugates of one another. So that's a pretty important concept there. They will be conjugates of one another. And we'll see that again when we go through the next method to solve quadratic equations in 11.2. But this is the end of this video there. So here's your introduction there to solving quadratic equations with the square root property.